So we're now on section 5.2. We're going to add and subtract. Decimals. Oh my. Can we add decimals together? Yes. How? Line them up. How? Should I? Okay, I, I'll give you options. I'll give you options. It's either this way. Or it's this way. Like that. Why? Because you want your place number, your place value in the same order. Got a place value the same. Here, if you did this way, you'd be adding thousandths plus tenths plus hundredths. <laughs> Those aren't the same units at all, right? You'd be adding a whole number to your ten, uh, your hundredths and your tenths. That'd be a bad thing. If we line up our decimal place, it organizes everything for us. Just write them kind of neatly. If you, if you mess up your place value, you're going to be adding the incorrect things. So this one, no, not so much. This one, absolutely. We've got the decimal place organized in our numbers for us. Everything is in order, place value speaking. We've just got to make sure our numbers are the right length. So in order to do that, might want to add on some zeros to this thing. Make them all the same, same length. That keeps things kind of nice for us. Then we're just going to add them like we normally would add any other numbers. That's why it's, it, it's easier than, than um, I'm sorry, it's as easy as adding our, our original numbers that we dealt with in chapter 1. How many thousandths are we going to get? Six. Six. How many hundredths? Five. How many tenths? Thirteen. Thirteen, Thirteen tenths. What do I do with that extra ten? Yeah, and notice what you just said. You said thirteen tenths, right? Yeah. Ten of those things makes up a whole. The extra three, that's what we're leaving there. The extra whole, we have to carry that over. How many decimals now? Okay, decimals, straight down. How many ones do we have? Twelve. Twelve ones, that makes a ten. So we get 62.356 or 62 and 356 thousandths. Feel okay about that? Yeah. Yes. Can you also subtract decimals? Yes. Do you still have to line them up? Yes. Now, with addition, it really didn't matter which number went on the top. Notice how we had the big number way down here at the bottom and the smallest number way up here at the top. It doesn't matter. However, subtraction, it does matter. It's not commutative like addition is. So when we subtract these, yeah, we definitely have to have them in the appropriate order. We'll line them up by the decimal place and we'll subtract. Tell me what I need to do here. Can I subtract the 9 minus 2? No. Or 2 minus 9? You have to borrow. Yeah. borrow. Okay, so I borrow from the 4. No, you got to borrow from the 3. Or from the very beginning. Eventually, I'm going to have to, yeah. Because right here, I borrow from the 4, makes it a 3. That takes care of this for this little bit of time. I do get a 3 and a thousandth spot. But then I'm stuck with this 3 minus 5, and I can't do that. Borrow again. Borrow again. 13 minus 5, well, that gives us 8. But the 5 minus 7, I can't deal with that. Okay, 15 minus 7, I get another 8. I'll make sure I don't lose my decimal place. <coughs> but now 0 minus 8, I can't do that, so I'm going to borrow from the 3. 22.883. Could you have borrowed all the way from the beginning? Sure you can, that's fine. I'm just showing you either way works for you. Do you feel okay getting 22.883? What would you do if you had 5.4 minus 1.882? Line, okay, I can do that. Put two zeros next to the 4. 
Now, in the case of subtraction, addition really didn't matter if we had zeros, right? Because they, they didn't have any, any value for those places. However, if you're subtracting, you're pretty much taking, you, you can't get a two here, you're taking zero minus two. You do have to put those zeros on there because they, they matter in this case. You're subtracting now. What can you do? Borrow from the four. From the four, okay. Or from the five, either one. I can't borrow from this, so I have to go one more place over. If I borrow from the four, I make it a three. That makes this a ten, true? Yes. But now I need one more from that, so how much is the ten going to become? Uh, nine. That's how I'd have to borrow. Now I can do the ten minus two. I can do the nine minus eight, but I can't do the three minus eight. I've got to borrow from the five, I get, and then our decimal, and then 3.518. Same thing would happen if you take like a, like a whole number minus a decimal. Just note that when I lined it up, it had 47. Where's the decimal? I read it the 4 after the setup. Seven. So 47 is a whole number. Point zero zero. That's still a whole number. Are you with me? Then you'd have to do the 3.96 lined up with that and then put two zeros. I'll leave that tip for you to do on your own at a later time. I just want to make sure you can line that up. Of course, you'd have to borrow from the seven to make both of these uh, able to be subtracted with our nine or our six. Do you feel okay about the addition and subtraction so far? Yeah. Now, the next part of this asks, can you do the same thing when I incorporate positives and negatives? For instance, suppose we had rule that we talked about? Yeah. We, I mean, I, I probably pretty much pounded it in your head, right? Made sure you knew it for this reason. So that when you get to stuff like decimals, you still stick with the same thing. If you pretend for a second, just ignore this and ignore that. Think about it as negative 36 plus 54. Think about that thought before you start doing the decimals. Just think about that. Negative 36 plus 54. Ladies and gentlemen, are the signs the same or different? different. Are you going to add or subtract? Subtract. Yeah. And you keep the sign of? Oh, is our answer going to be positive or negative here? Positive. Positive. Definitely positive. You're going to use the same exact thing with this now. Notice the signs are different. You're going to subtract. You're going to keep the sign of the bigger number. You're going to get positive something out of this. Are you with me? Yeah. The idea of the addition rule does not change ever, whether you're adding fractions or decimals or whole numbers. So how you show you work on this, you go, okay, I understand that these have different signs. Different signs means I'm going to subtract. Now, you have to subtract by taking the big number minus the small number. That's the only way we know how to do subtraction. Your sign is going to be identified by what number is bigger in this case because we take this subtraction, we have different signs, we subtract, sign of the bigger number tells us we're on positive. We already identify that. Then we'll subtract this, we'll get 3.0281. So 18.203. Did you get 18.203? Yes. Yeah. Everybody? Yes. Now, are we going to have positive 18.203 or negative? Positive. positive. Okay, so use the addition rule to either add or subtract depending on whether your signs are the same or different, respectively. Then you use the sign rules for addition rules that says if our signs are different, I'm taking the sign of the bigger number. If the bigger number is positive, I'm going to keep this positive, 18.203. And that's your final answer. So we're using the addition rule in conjunction with adding and subtracting decimals. We'll practice more on this next time. How many will feel pretty good about this, though? OK, so. We're going to continue talking about how to add and subtract some decimals, and we're learning that addition rule is still relevant. It still works for us. So let's take a look at this example and see what we can do. So negative 2.86 minus 
First off, if you ever get confused on what to do with decimals, the first thing I want you to think of, or maybe even write this on the board, eliminate the decimals and see what you would do then. For instance, if you're like, wow, I have no idea what to do with that problem. Well, think about it in your head. What would you do with negative 2 minus 10? Would you be able to do that problem? I hope so. Yeah, because the same thing you do on this problem, you can apply that to this problem. For instance, if you could do negative 2 minus 10 and write that as negative 2 plus negative 10, do you remember doing that? Yeah. Yes. What would you do with those two numbers? Add them or subtract them? Uh, and then you keep the common yeah. sign. Yeah, we'd do that. We're going to do the same thing here. You see, instead of having negative 2 and negative 10, we have negative 2.86 minus 10.3. We can still write that, folks, as negative 2.86 plus negative 10.3. Do you guys see the similarity between those two problems? Yeah. Are the signs the same or different? Same. They're still the same. Are you going to add them or subtract them? Add them. Exactly what we talked about doing here. So off to the side, add those numbers together. We'll do 10.3 plus 2.86. So as long as you know how to add and subtract some basic decimals, you know how to carry, you know how to borrow, and as long as you know the addition rules, you should be set for this section. Now, can I add these? Yes. How much are we going to get? Yeah. Good, all right. This makes six hundredths, 11 tenths, which carries over. We get a three. We'll remember to bring down our decimal point. We get 13.16. So our answer is 13.16. True or false? False. false. Why false? Aha. Uh -huh. That you know what, that's people's biggest mistake. They usually will do this, they'll usually make it this far and go, yeah, I know what I'm doing. You do, absolutely, you've done this before. This is old stuff, you should know how to do that. You go, you, know, you go, oh yeah, I'm supposed to add them together, and you do, great job. You get this far and they go, I'm done. Don't forget about your signs. That's one of the biggest things. It's one of the biggest pe things that people mess up on this problem. They go this far and then they forget about those signs. We're definitely supposed to have a negative because we have two of the same sign being added together. That's gonna be negative 13.16. We'll try about two more together. I'll give you three to do on your own, and then we'll be about, about done. So let's try this example. We got negative 2.91 minus negative 4.2. Again, when you get confused on this, and it might happen that you're like, wow, this, that's just a whole bunch of numbers going on. I really don't get what I'm doing. Just break it down right off to the side. What would you do if you eliminate the decimals? Check this out. What would you do instead of having all these numbers if you just had negative 2 minus negative 4? That looks a lot easier, right? Because we've done, we've done that stuff before. But notice it's similar to this one, isn't it? Very similar. What would you do here? What would you do with the minus a negative? That's something we should have. Good. So we just go, okay, that's negative 2 plus 4. You guys with me still? Yeah. Do you have to put the 4 on top? Well, we're going to figure out what we're going to do on this problem now, and then we'll apply it to the next one. So the question is, are you going to add or subtract those numbers? Subtract. Now, when you subtract them, when you subtract them, we subtract like we normally would with a large number minus a small number, don't we? We just go, what's 4 minus 2? That's how we do our subtraction. So when we get back over here, this answer, by the way, is positive 2, right? You subtract, you get the sign of the bigger number. In this case, it's positive. Watch how we apply that in this situation. 